Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode of the Coach's Corner where we answer your questions sent in by you guys to our Instagram page at Squat Club AU. Uh, how is everyone this week? Good? Good. Good. This morning. Good. Great. Yeah. Great. Great. It's getting warmer. Where are you up to, Ash? Bahamas. <laughs> yeah, I'm off to Bahamas next week. This week? Oh. Well, it's Monday night, so I'm already there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already there. I'm uh, sipping on the cocktails. <laughs> Supplements are what I think. Like a lot of new people coming into the industry, they're like, "Oh, this fitness model takes a supplement, so I must need it too." When if you get down to basics, save yourself a lot of money. You don't really need to buy it. Supplements are there to supplement your diet and your exercise. Keyword supplement. Supplement, yeah. yeah. So yeah. people have to think it a lot, and a lot of them are not even proven to yeah. do much. Yeah. Um, I think the only one that's really proven is creatine. Yeah. We just spoke about the other week. Yep. Another good one is protein powder as well. If you're struggling, I know a lot of females uh, struggle to get your protein, so that's always a good one to help out when you start. But yeah, save yourself a lot of money. Yeah, <clears throat> it's a lot more important things you should be worrying about yeah. when you first start training rather than which supplement should I buy. That's like the very minimal, like nothing. That's the one percent. Yeah, the top I would yeah. Yeah. really worry about it. Focus yeah. on the fundamentals. Yep. Just like you can't out train a bad diet, mm -hmm. you eat supplement. It's like supplements aren't going to supplement anything if you haven't got the foundations in place yet. So um, yeah, so get, <laughs> get get that right first, and then if you've got some money, yeah, you can. Then you can buy your plasma TV. Yeah. <laughs> Don't buy the TV first, like you have no house. Yeah, because some of them are pretty. So some of the supplements are pretty expensive. Yeah. So, uh, but I think like definitely creatine is yeah. very helpful. But, um, a lot of studies on it we talked about previously. But so, not everyone needs to have it. Yeah, no, yeah, you don't need it at all. But yeah, so. Protein, if you get yeah, struggling with your protein numbers, but yeah. That so that <clears throat> that probably depends on kind of what happens when you <clears throat> when your chest does dip forward. So your hips shift back and your chest dips forward, and you kind of get stuck there. Probably usually means you've got a weak back compared to your legs. So your legs are strong enough to take you out of the bottom, but your back isn't strong enough to finish off the movement. So. In that case, maybe things like um, Romanian deadlifts, back extensions, or uh, doing good mornings. Yeah, that'll strengthen up your back, so bring up that strength to make your leg strength. Good morning squats. Good morning. <laughs> not, not good morning squats. Yeah. <laughs> or in that case, that person isn't doing a good morning squat. If, if you get stuck there, then your back isn't strong enough. But if you are doing a good morning squat, that's probably the opposite, where your, your back is strong, so you can finish off the movement, but your legs are weak compared to your back. So, because they're not strong enough, they're quickly shifting the weight away from the legs into your back, which in this case is strong enough to finish off the movement. So, can you demonstrate a good morning squat? <laughs> <laughs> for the people at home, did I do it? Do it? Just what a side profile? Well. <laughs> Something like that. That was bad. That's almost a bended snap. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> that was not a good morning squat. <laughs> but, uh, would you say tight hips as well and quads? Yeah. Um, yeah, it can be. Yeah, it can be. Yeah, I think Bracing. a lot of times it's very helpful to strengthen your legs. Yeah. See if you can strengthen your legs. Bring up the strength of your legs to meet the strength of your back. So, of course, yeah. Maybe leg presses, hack squat. Uh, we've got a pendulum squat here, so um, just bring up the strength of your legs to kind of up that, and then, and then maybe once you've kind of, if if, if it isn't imbalanced, you've addressed that. Maybe as we've discussed could before, be maybe strip, yeah. the, strip the weight back mm -hmm. and hone in your technique. And Foot distribution, are you going more on your toes and your heels? Are you locked in through the upper back? Are you retracting? Um, all those issues as well. Mm. Tempo squats as well. Yeah, like yeah. Just slowly descending, controlling the entire movement more than mm. anything. Because then if you can control the movement, there's not going to be anything wrong with it. Yeah. You can go through it fully. Yeah. Just grab the bar as well. And like what I say with, with my clients is grabbing the bar, bend the bar like you're the Hulk. Try and bend it around your body to create upper body tightness. The Hulk. <laughs> the Hulk can do it. <laughs> can you bend the bar around your body? No, I'm not the Hulk. Oh, the Hulk can. <laughs> I thought we'd say um, Superman, but Superman does that work? Superman's pretty strong. Well, you could probably do He's it. He's a bit more mobile as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that looks a big like. You could probably break. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like? Can we just do that again? I'll get on the mic. <laughs> I'm not crying. Where's the talk? Quick, give me a 
Um, most of the time, like food is a reward, so find a different reward system. Um, the other thing is too is it you have to think about it if you are really using say chocolate as a reward system is it rewarding you because it's actually causing more issues say if you're trying to lose weight or from a health perspective and a long-term health perspective if you are choosing foods that aren't great um, as a as a food reward and then that leads to potentially you know cardiovascular disease diabetes whatnot if these choices continue and it's constant mm -hmm. um, food reward and it gets out of hand so I would be looking at um, you know you want to look at nourishing your body so eating like providing good nutrition food for it and that is a reward for your body not actually you know say a block of chocolate or whatnot um, so yeah find different rewards and use that so it might be at the end of the week and it might be like okay I'm just going to save it and go out and maybe have some dessert then but not something every day but also you find something that you can do every day that is a reward um, that makes you feel good, that gives you those same feelings that eating that food does. Mm -hmm. It could be like as yeah. simple as like the reward <laughs> through buying a book or like something like that so that if you change a reward. Like food is pleasurable and it yeah. should be enjoyed but it shouldn't be the enjoyment in your life that you have to go to every day for, for you to get satisfaction out of yeah. your life as well. And the thing is you feel good when you make good choices for yourself. So when you make good choices for yourself, you feel better for yourself. So that's your reward as well. Whereas if you're not making good choices for yourself, you don't feel good in yourself. So it affects your confidence levels and what you do. So think of it like that too. The more you make better choices, the better choices you make, you're going to feel better. So whatever Emotionally that as well. Like yeah. that, that will like link back to the yeah. bigger term. I think long term as well rather than a short term. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, you feel good for that minute you're eating chocolate. But, but after, after that, you finish it, yeah. that yeah. 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 yeah, like and just use that moment to pause and be like, okay, what is it that I actually want right now? Like, okay, I might be feeling too good about myself or whatnot. Is chocolate or whatever it is going to solve that issue? No, it's probably going to create more issues when it gets out of hand. So do something that, you know, makes you feel safe powered or makes you feel good about yourself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, me and Abby were talking about this this morning. Um, we we're talking about um, check out their podcast. <laughs> yeah, right. Check out our very own show that Abby and Luke coach this corner. <laughs> Me up next week, next Monday. <laughs> and then we we're talking about um, like why and how to, how do you lose weight? So the reason why you lose weight is because you're in a cal calorie deficit. So that's why, yeah. But then you can't just be like, oh, okay, I'm just going to get be in a calorie deficit. It's like, how do you how do you lose weight? How do you get in a calorie does deficit? And it comes down to decisions, behaviors, and like probably just habits. So um, putting the right steps in place, you've got to kind of put the steps in place that will change your overall behavior. So you're looking for behavior change, you're not looking for, so when you set goals, for example, if goals an example, you'd set a behavioral goal, not an outcome goal. So you wouldn't be like, okay, I want to lose five kilos, that's the outcome. You're going to look at the behavior that you're doing. So if, for example, a strategy you can put in place would be like, okay, I want to, to like this week, I want to make sure I have five good lunches and just get the lunches sorted. So that would be behavior that would end up leading to the outcome. So I think putting strategies like that in place rather than saying like, okay, um, you have to be in a, after being a calorie deficit, after you're losing weight, that, that's probably not going to um, help you in an aspect. So um, that's just one strategy you could do. Um, I guess the biggest thing is like everyone knows what they have to do. Like for example. Like my, my shoulder's a bit sore, I know what I have to do to fix it, but I, I don't do it. And that just, that's, <laughs> but you know what, but that's, it's just human, we all do it. Like if we, if we all sit here and we don't, we don't do that, we'll be lying. Like yeah. everyone knows that how, like everyone knows that they have to lose weight, but it's like, okay, how do, like, how do I actually do it? And actually putting the steps in place. So <clears> the <throat> biggest thing is just put it in action. Like yeah. mate, yeah. put in the yeah. steps in place, okay? Take those first few steps. You gotta you gotta take the steps, otherwise it's never gonna change. Nothing's gonna change unless you put the steps into place. So it could be as simple as like, okay, I'm just gonna make sure that my breakfast is really good this week. That's your that's your behaviour goal, and then you just you work on that. Once you've got that in place, okay, now I'm gonna go make sure I don't eat that block of chocolate every week. I'm gonna maybe have one one little block, I don't know. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah, little steps. And I think too is that getting down to the root cause of why you wanna do that. So if, okay, well and good to say I wanna lose weight but then why do you want to lose weight? I'm mm -hmm. going to feel better in clothes. Okay, what's going to happen when you feel better in clothes? I'm going to feel more confident. What's going to happen when you're more confident? I'm going to be happier, I'm going to be less stressed, I'll be able to approach girls, I don't know, like whatever that motivation <laughs> is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for girls. <laughs>
Don't you just sit down and get it. I can see that face though. You're a great traveller. <laughs> but get down to that root cause of why and what is that actually going to impact on your life and how is that going to impact on your life. So yeah. I think that's a really important one um, motive. To, yeah, because yeah. we all, everyone wants, everyone wants to lose, like everyone wants to be healthy, but it's just, it's this, like, it's when you simplify it, it's actually the steps you actually have to take. Actually, they look on paper, they look easy. Yeah. Like you've just got to eat well, you've got to exercise, you've got to move, you've got to sleep. Yeah, like and that seems to us pretty simple, but it's like, well, why isn't everyone doing that? Yeah, and I think that's the biggest. And when you get the results first, you can get booked. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You yeah. get addicted to it. It yeah. seems really hard to begin with, but then you just you get hooked on it, and you just want to keep going. And you, do, and you, know, like you, habits, yeah, then, you yeah. make habits, and like the, we know understanding habits is the hardest part. Is the start. I always explain it. It's like pushing a heavy ball up a hill. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard. Once you get over the hill, boom, it's gonna roll down. Yeah. Like that's just that's, that's, that's but you a, gotta you gotta take the steps to be in because. Mm. I think a lot of people do look at it and think, oh, I've got to do this, this, and this. It's yeah. too overwhelming. Yeah. Just take yeah. a one step at a time. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. And then how's that going to improve your life? Quality of life? Everything. Grandkids, kids, like being able to play with kids. Like, Energy, don't do everything. Yeah, and they'll see the changes you're making and then they'll see yeah. that as motivation yeah. for making yeah. it all too. Yeah. 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 It's pretty so, important. The way that you start looking out at life as well, like, Everything changes. Everything changes. Yeah. But you have to put the steps in place, yeah. otherwise it's never gonna change. And it's just that simple, I guess. Mm. Like and like I said, it's not it's not uh, like I'm not advocating it's gonna be easy because it's not it's not easy really when you think about it. But it's easy on paper, but yeah, actually you, you have to put it into place, you have to take action. If you want change, you've got to make change. Cool. Even like what we all we, we do, we focus on like smaller goals too, like when we break it down into like um, like a nutrition goal, a lifestyle goal and a training mm. goal. And then that way you can break it down further for what the ultimate goal is. You know, yeah. you know, as soon as you, like you were saying, then if you break it down smaller, that's when you're going to start to, to reach, you know, what the big outcome is supposed to be. Yeah. So but, make sure, like, yeah, the big outcome is the outcome, but then you set like behavior. I think that's the yeah. biggest one. Yeah. yeah. You need a big outcome, but it's like how you're going to get there. Yeah. And, and if you're if you're setting like a nutrition goal, a uh, lifestyle goal, and a training goal, you know that that bigger goal, like those three things, if you're gonna, when you set those goals, like they're going to work towards that bigger goal regardless. Yeah. So don't always look as, you know, oh, I'm coming in to, to lose weight. Well, I mean, it's, mostly everyone is, but you know, it's it just seems so far away. So if you start making small daily goals of you know, training, nutrition, lifestyle, you're gonna get closer to the biggest goal. That's it for today's episode of <laughs> The Coach's Corner. Um, we're not here next week. <laughs> I'm, still in the, I'm still in the cameras. <laughs> um, going away so we're going to be back for the following week but uh, if you have questions for us then make sure you Instagram us and send them into our DMs Squat Club AU and uh, we'll see you back on the next episode on the couch <laughs> why did she do that? I don't know, I don't know why I pushed this. Why did she do that? I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. It's not like you farted. You're like pushed away. Alright, bye. <laughs>